Hey guys, my name is Deej Savage and I'm the Director of Accounts at Brand Definition. I'm recording this here at my home. I'm sure most of you guys are watching this from your home as well and have found that in the last couple of weeks you've had to give a lot more remote presentations and you've held a lot more remote meetings than you probably have ever before. We wanted to share our four tips and tricks to present ideas effectively and create an impactful remote presentation. So the four tips that I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today are about preparing your presentation, building your presentation, practicing your presentation, and then finally giving your presentation. And just remember that while these are tips for remote presentations, a lot of the things you're gonna be able to carry on to when we're able to go back to doing in-person meetings as well. All right, so let's start by looking at preparation. The absolute very first thing you wanna do when you're putting together your presentation is to understand your audience. You have to figure out who they are, you have to figure out how many there are, you might be presenting to a group of five, a group of 500, um, and you also wanna figure out where they are in the world. Figuring this out is going to help you effectively figure out your story, it's gonna help you figure out which platform you wanna use, and it's gonna help you figure out what you want out of the presentation. So some companies are gonna give a presentation where their goal is lead generation and they want to capture information from their audience. Other people might be giving a pitch to a small group of five, maybe 10 people, and they wanna make sure that the presentation only goes to that specific group. So once you have that figured out, you can start looking at your different platforms. Some of the platforms that we trust um, for, say you're doing a smaller presentation where you really wanna be able to control who sees it. Uh, we trust Zoom, uh, Google Meet, Teams, platforms like that where you have to send out the invitation and you have to have their email address in order for them to get the link. Now, if you're looking to do a bigger presentation, something where you're going to capture leads, where you're going to capture information from your audience, we use GoToWebinar and we also use Livestorm. Um, those are the two big webinar platforms that we tend to use and that we trust for ourselves and our clients. So once you have your platform figured out, the next thing that you wanna figure out while you're still preparing for your presentation is your secondary presentation platform or software. Um, I'm talking about any sort of visual aid that you want to use to add value to what you're saying. You can use anything from PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides. Those are all very easy to convert to PDFs and email out to your audience or to share your screen and be able to share it that way. Um, one of the things you're really going to want to figure out before you pick which one you go with is what type of visual aids you want. Um, so remember that when you're presenting, your visual aids should really add value to what you're saying and they shouldn't just regurgitate the words that are coming out of your mouth. So, you know, if you have something that's very text heavy, you might want to go with something like PowerPoint. Um, Google Slides is great for sharing and collaboration. Um, Keynote, if you have a Mac, is really easy to embed videos in. So if you have a lot of photos or videos, then Keynote's a really good one to use as well. All right, so you've done your preparation, you know who your audience is, you know when you wanna give your presentation, you know which platform you're gonna use, and you know what you're gonna use for your secondary presentation or your visual aids. Now you're ready to build the deck. So first you wanna think about your audience and think about what your goals are for the presentation, what you, what you want your audience to take away from it. And you're gonna use that to create an outline. This is going to help you make sure that you hit your goals, that you talk about everything you want to talk about, and that it all makes sense to your audience and is told in the right order. Once you have your outline finished, then you can start putting together your deck. And this is the really important part where you can use branding to make it look more professional, to make it to enhance the story that you're telling. And then just to go back and make it look clean, make sure you're using the same fonts throughout, make sure your visuals are clean, you're using high-res images, you're embedding videos where possible so that you're not taken away from the presentation in the middle. You wanna make sure that by the end of it, when you click through, if someone who didn't know anything on the topic went through, they would know who you are, the story you wanna tell, and that they would have the takeaways that you want them to have.
All right, so our third tip for creating an impactful presentation is to practice. You must practice, practice, practice. I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, and you wanna do this for a lot of different reasons. The first is you wanna familiarize yourself with your own material because that's what's going to make you come off as an expert to your audience. And there's no doubt that you're an expert going into it, but once you sort of throw the camera in front of you, sometimes there will be live questions rolling in. There are a lot of things that can distract you. So if you're really familiar with what you're presenting, then it's almost gonna be more muscle memory than having to sit there and continually think through everything and make sure you hit all of your points. You also wanna practice so you can look at your setup beforehand. Um, it's really important that you don't have a distracting setup. Well, I know we're all at home right now, and if you're giving a remote presentation, you're obviously not going to have access to the professional grade studios that, that we're able to utilize when we're out in the world. But you do wanna make sure that there aren't any screens coming out of your head or any weird pictures or plans in the background that's gonna be distracting to your audience throughout. You also wanna test your equipment before you go especially if you're doing a live presentation, because the last thing you want is to be ready for this presentation and you log on and you have some sort of technical difficulty and it's just gonna throw you off your game. So if you test your microphone, you test your camera, you test everything that you are going to be using to make sure it works with the platform that you've chosen and to make sure that you know how to use it, then that's just less things that you have to worry about during the presentation and you can make sure that you're hitting all of your points and, and saying things that are impactful and meaningful to your audience. We have made it to the final presentation and we have just a few tips that you should remember while you're giving your presentation. The first is you want to show your passion and your knowledge for what it is you're talking about. A lot of people can freeze up when they're put in front of cameras or put in front of audiences, especially remotely. Don't be afraid to, to, to show facial expressions, to talk with your hands because that is really what's going to show that you're passionate and that you understand what you're talking about. Also, start strong. Smile. Take a deep breath before you start talking. Make sure you slow down as you go through because a lot of people have the tendency to just want to sort of make it through and then they start speeding up and no one can understand what they're saying. But if you slow down, take a breath, and present strong, then it's going to come across really well to your audience. And the final thing you want to remember is we don't want you reading along with your slides. Everyone knows when you're reading and you're just regurgitating information. This is where the practicing comes in handy, where the more you practice and the more you say it out loud to yourself, then the more you're not going to have to rely on your visual aids and your slides to make it through the presentation. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time today. And just remember that for any presentation you're putting together, you have to know your audience, you have to know which platform you want to use, you have to have clean visual aids that add value to what you're saying, you absolutely have to practice and just slow down and be passionate about what it is you're presenting. If you have any questions about this, feel free to send me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much.